My name is Rachel Bradshaw, and welcome to the Savannah River. The Savannah River is one of Georgia's longest and largest waterways. Look at this map of Georgia. You can see the Savannah River right here. The Savannah River is an important landmark. On this side of the river is the state of Georgia, and on the other side of the river is the state of South Carolina. The Savannah River is very old, and historians tell us that American Indians were living by the Savannah River for hundreds of years. This location on the Savannah River is where the first colonists arrived with James Oglethorpe as their leader. James Oglethorpe established the colony of Georgia in 1733. A group of wealthy leaders called the Trustees sent him to set up the new land. Why did James Oglethorpe and the Trustees want to start the colony of Georgia? There were a few reasons. In 1733, if a person owed money or did not have money, they could be sent to jail. James Oglethorpe wanted to set up a new colony for poor people to avoid debt and prison. He had a friend who died in prison for having debt that he could not pay. And James Oglethorpe wanted to create a place for people from England to work and make money with their land. The trustees for the colony agreed this was a good idea and that it would help England. Georgia's location was perfect for making money for England by growing crops like rice, grapes for wine, and mulberry trees to produce silk. They also thought the colony could provide lumber to England. The colony of South Carolina was across the Savannah River from Georgia. South Carolina was a wealthy and prosperous colony, growing rice and other crops for England. So James Oglethorpe and the trustees thought Georgia would be successful. The colony of South Carolina was significant to England. King George II wanted a buffer zone of protection between the Spanish in Florida and the French along the Mississippi River. Georgia was in between South Carolina and both the Spanish and French, and that would provide the perfect buffer zone protecting South Carolina. When James Oglethorpe arrived to select the new colony's location, he landed here upon Yamacraw Bluff. A bluff is a cliff with a flat top. Yamacraw Bluff was over 40 feet high above the Savannah River. This raised location provided extra protection from floods or hurricanes. It also provided extra protection against any enemy or intruder because they would have to climb 40 feet to reach the colony. Being in the higher location also meant the colonists would see further and see anyone approaching, like the French or Spanish. The Yamacraw people, part of the Creek tribe of American Indians, lived in this spot when James Oglethorpe arrived. Tomachichi was the chief of the Yamacraw people. James Oglethorpe and Tomachichi needed to communicate and compromise, but they did not speak the same language. Mary Musgrove was a Creek princess and had an English father. She grew up speaking both English and Muscogee, the language of the Creek and Yamacraw people. Her fluency or ability to speak both languages was a great asset. She was a successful businesswoman and fur trader who made a profit and owned land. Because of her success and ability to speak both languages, Mary Musgrove became the translator for James Oglethorpe and Tomachichi. With the help of Mary Musgrove, Tomachichi gave James Oglethorpe a gift of buffalo skin, painted on the inside with a feathery eagle. He explained that the eagle means speed and the buffalo means strength. The gift would become a symbol of their lifelong friendship. After the Yamacraw people 
agreed to allow James Oglethorpe to establish the colony of Georgia along Yamacraw Bluff, the first colonists arrived. This marker from the Georgia Historical Society is located on Bay Street in the National Historic Landmark District of Savannah today. It tells us that this is the exact spot where the 114 colonists disembarked the ship Anne and set foot for the first time in Georgia's new colony. After being at sea for months, there was still much to be done to create a city. Yamacraw Bluff was a pine tree forest with birds, deer, turkey, and buffalo when the colonists arrived. James Oglethorpe divided the colonists into three groups. One group cut down trees to clear the land for a city. Another group prepared the land and soil for planting. The last group built wooden houses and a fence around the town for protection. Tomachichi and the Yamakra people taught the colonists how to build simple wattle and daub shelters, and hunt deer and turkey with spears, and catch fish with nets. They also taught the colonists how to grow corn, indigo, tobacco, squash, beans, nuts, and fruit. The colonists introduced new crops to the region, like cotton, mulberry, oranges, peaches, olives, apples, figs, pomegranates, and more. All the children had to do chores. Boys would herd cows, chop wood, and hunt. And the girls would milk cows, make butter, pick vegetables, and look after the chickens. It took over a year to build the colony. This map shows the city of Savannah and the colony of Georgia in 1734. If you look closely, you can see a tent. This is the tent where James Oglethorpe slept while building the colony. It's his tent. As the leader, he was the last person to have their house built and he guarded the colony by the edge of the bluff. The house James Oglethorpe built was located here, where the large modern building is. Today, this is the United States Customs House's location. They control the trade along the Savannah River. Although James Oglethorpe's house is not here anymore, we can still see a small plaque on the Customs House corner. This plaque tells us that this is where James Oglethorpe's house was located and that it was a small wooden shelter. It's important to remember that after sleeping in a tent on top of the bluff, he built his house as close as the bluff as possible to continue to be on guard protecting his colony. <laughs>